So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Galaxy S22, which we're recording on right now, versus the famous, popular iPhone 13. Let's take a look at these two phones and break it down and find out which one is the best for you. All right, guys, and let's talk about one of the more interesting aspects between both the S22 and the iPhone 13, and that is their body and the build. I actually think they feel about the same. You know, they're both kind of squared on the edge they do kind of curve around at the top up there and they do have a similar size display on both of them the iphone feels slightly thicker it feels slightly heavier um 174 167 grams here so i would say the samsung is the more sleek device it's a little bit better in terms of ergonomics and size but the iphone 13 you know has really good battery life and you know it's kind of nice iphone square design as well it's their classic look, you know, their iPhone 5-like look they brought back to the new gen over here. The cameras, triple cameras on the back of the Galaxy. And then over here we have dual cameras on this phone. And on the back you have more of that iPhone Pro-like feel on the S22, whereas you have the glass smudgy backs on the iPhone 13. That could be a deal breaker for some if they don't like their phone getting dirty, but if they don't care, it won't matter. Overall, if I had to pick one in terms of design, I think I'm gonna give it to the Samsung. The punch hole, having this really bezel-less display, bigger notch on this phone, heavier, a little bit, just thicker feeling. I like the ergonomics of the Samsung. But overall, they're both beautiful, and I do like the color options that come with the iPhone 13. Either way you go here, you're getting basically the Android equivalent with the S22, and you're getting the iPhone equivalent of the S22, on Apple, so either way you go, you're gonna be pretty happy with their body build design. They're both IP68 dust and water resistant, and they both are, you know, pretty solid when it comes to their overall, you know, Gorilla Glass Victus Plus on the rear and the front, aluminum frame. Over here you have aluminum frame, you have, you know, you got glass, Gorilla Glass on the front and back of this one as well, so pretty good durability on both of them. Okay, so when it comes to their displays, you are looking at OLED on both of them. The Samsung does have a 120 hertz display, which is capable of an adaptive refresh. Over here, 60 hertz on the iPhone. However, one thing to note is that the Samsung Galaxy S22 out of the box has been a little bit choppy, but I think that'll be fixed. Apple, even with their 60 hertz display, is really smooth. So it's probably not the biggest deal in the world, but at the same time, if you're looking for a better value for specification, I do think you'll enjoy the S22 a little bit more than the iPhone when it comes to just specs, but the iPhone, great as well. I just like where they went with the iPhone 13 Pro. This one, the iPhone 13, just still got that kind of older iPhone feel when it comes to display, but still has an XDR OLED. This one's capable of a little bit more brightness. So if you go into settings now, you scroll to display, you go to extra brightness, you can actually take a full advantage of that brightness. You can see it overexposes. It can hit 1300 nits peak on this one. For the iPhone, you could hit up to 1200 nits, but usable, I find it around 800. So with that extra brightness tweak, the Samsung could get a little bit brighter than this phone. This one right here does have a pretty good density as well, 460 PPI. So when you get close to the display, you know, it's gonna be quite sharp. No one's gonna see pixels on this one. And it has a 1959 aspect ratio, but so does the Samsung. This also has a 1959 aspect ratio on here and you have really sharp text as well, up to 425 PPI across the 1080p display. So the iPhone's slightly sharper, but the Samsung brighter slightly and also has a little bit more screen to body ratio and has the same 1959. This one has always on display, so when you lock the screen, there is an ability to see an always on display. Can't do that on the iPhone still. Over here on the iPhone though, they have true tone on board, dark modes available on both of them. And, and Samsung also has eye comfort shield, which is very similar to that of true tone. You can go over here to eye comfort shield and you can go inside of here. You can make it adaptive, which will automatically adjust, or you can custom color it at night if you need it really nice and uh, blocking out that blue light at nighttime. So both of them gorgeous displays. One of the major differences though are right up here, the punch hole and the notch. Which one do you like better? It's really up to you. There's a lot more security in this iPhone here, but that Samsung, I think a little bit sleeker for sure, a little bit more all screen feeling than the iPhone. Both of them, really gorgeous displays. You're not gonna go wrong either way. I think the Samsung's feels a little higher end though, but again, the iPhone's a little sharper. All right, so which one should you choose in terms of software? I don't wanna make this a big, you know, section. I think by now, we've already chosen. Do we like the more customizable 
you know, edge screen, multitasking, split screen Samsung with all of your customizations and now promising longer software update support on here. Although I still find them not to come out as fast as I would see on Apple. Apple releases software updates like they're going out of style. Or do you want the nice clean app library, the easy list in the app library, the widgets that look very consistent across the platform and you want these polished apps, you want iOS, you want your ecosystem of Apple. If that's you, it's, it's that simple guys. It's that simple between these two phones. It don't make it complex, more complex than it has to be. I think if you're into a more practical operating system that does a little bit more functionality, a little bit more like a pocket computer, you'll probably like the Samsung more. I think if you're into polished applications and you just really enjoy, you know, Apple apps and stuff and you've been in this system a long time, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You'll probably enjoy the iPhone. So that's kind of how I would choose in terms of software. If you want longer software support though, it's gonna be the iPhone and those software updates will come in more consistent on the iPhone, the Samsung. Yeah, they're gonna have four years, but you know Apple's gonna push them out quicker. And this one might even go like six or seven years. Like these iPhones are so powerful now, you see the 6S still getting updates. This thing will be around for quite some time. This one probably a little bit shorter, but still longer term than what we used to get on Samsung Galaxy phones. Performance, now Samsung was in trouble with the media the other day for, you know, Geekbench, whatever. Yeah, I don't care. Look, Samsung phones, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, this thing has eight gigabytes of RAM. This has four gigs of RAM, Apple's ridiculous fast A15 Bionic chipset. The iPhone's more powerful, it just is. It's a little more efficient, it has, Quicker video editing if you like to do stuff like that. You know, gaming a little bit more efficient with Apple's in-house GPU. You know, we got Adreno GPUs on the Samsung. Samsung does have Qualcomm CPU. They're, not everything's in-house. So the phone right here, and then their Exynos chip that is in-house is not as quick as the Qualcomm CPU. So Samsung, not quite as fast. However, it's still very quick in the day-to-day. -day. And I think at this point in 2022, the way we use phones, both of these will handle your day-to-day -day tasks just fine. I never like I'm on the Samsung thinking, oh man, I'm missing the performance on the iPhone so much. And I'm not on the iPhone thinking I'm missing the performance on the Samsung ever. What I'm actually on these phones thinking is when it comes to using them is, oh, I'm missing some features from the iPhone or oh, I'm missing some features from the Samsung. So at this point, performance on both of these is very strong. Um, the Samsung again has a few little chops with the display, a couple updates in and I think it'll be even better. But right now I just had to mention that, but the iPhone, just about a flawless performer regardless that it only has a 60 Hertz display. All right, so when it comes to battery life, we have a little bit of a larger battery on the Samsung. We are looking at 3700 milliamp versus 3240 on the iPhone. I found yesterday, I was taking these for a photo samples and they lasted quite similar actually. Um, they're not, these are not the longest lasting phones on the market, but I do find the iPhone have a little bit better standby time and an actual usage, it lasts a little bit longer than the Galaxy, even though the Galaxy has a bigger battery. In reality though, you know, both of them gonna give you, net you around five to six hour screen time, with the Samsung maybe coming in around four to five, depending on how heavy you're using it, what settings you have on it. The iPhone usually giving me five and a half, six easily. So they're not the eight, nine hours you're gonna get on the ultra phones or the, you know, plus max, those big phones, but they're still good enough. And they both are good for day-to-day -day use. These are really good consumer everyday phones but a good compromise between price, performance, overall build quality, they feel premium. Just a good balance. I just like the balance of these phones. Everything, nothing just seems really bad or really amazing. They just feel really well balanced, both of these. When it comes to the storage between both of these phones also, you can get to the iPhone with up to 512 gigabytes of storage, which is actually more than the Samsung provides it up to only 256 gig, which is kind of lame for those of you who want you know more storage in your phone, but you don't want the big phone the Apple device will offer you more. And I, now, for the Samsung over here, again, 256 gig, you know, they want you to go to the more premium phone to get more storage. And what's super lame is that Samsung used to be the value add-on with the, the, you know, SD card, no longer a thing here. It hasn't been, even on the S21, but that's lame. So basically, storage, you have more option on the iPhone. However, usually you can get the Samsung cheaper with like the 256 gig model, so keep that in mind. But there is more RAM, double the RAM than the iPhone. However, eh, it seems like it seems like Android phones need a little more RAM, so it's not really an argument for Samsung. I'm just saying, I do think 
that having more RAM is just kind of, it's a little thing to say, I got this better spec at least, you know, it's just something to mention. One of the most important elements about these phones, the cameras. Now I have a little screen protector thing on there. So if you're wondering, why does your camera look like that? Mine's like more the color of this, that's why. Dual camera, triple camera setup on here. So right out of the gate, you're gonna just think automatically, well, Samsung wins it, you know, you have triple cameras and that's not 100% the case because it, it more comes down to the results as well. Now you have a 0.6X, you'll have 3X. You can do much more zoom on the Samsung, up to 30X zoom. And I found that the Samsung, just like the other Samsung phones in the Ultra line, as well as the Plus line, more of a versatile setup. It's just got more you can do. However, those iPhone results are really good and they are very easy to get. There's like no shutter lag. You know, the camera is just super reliable. This freaking focus is amazing. It's just hard to, it's hard to pinpoint, you know, the, why is the iPhone so good? But, you know, there's a lot of reasons why. Smart HDR, Apple's, you know, spending a lot of time improving their cameras over the year. They got these different modes, the vibrant, the rich contrast, standard, whatever. You get the point. They have a lot going on for this camera internally while still remaining very easy to use. So the iPhone is very competitive. On the front, you could see we do have a 12 megapixel front facing camera. This thing can do 4K at 60, similar to the 11 Pro line. And you can do cinematic video on the front and the rear. So yeah, the iPhone 13 is loaded. Back to the Samsung though, take a look at all these features. Pro, Pro Video, single take, night mode. Samsung said, hey, you got the stuff, but we got the features. So you can see right there, we got portrait as well. You can do a portrait video mode in the more section, which would be kind of trying to emulate something like a cinematic video mode. Director's view as well. And the, the again, the portrait video was here first on the Samsung. On the front here, you have a 10 megapixel camera capable of some pretty solid video quality. You can do up to UHD 60, like the iPhone. I find the angle to be a little bit closer to my face but at least in the photo mode on the front, you can back it out and get more people in the frame. I'm done talking about them. I gotta say, more versatile setup, get the Samsung. You like easy focus, really fast shutter speed, and you just really want it to be easy and give you a great shot every time. I think you'll like the iPhone a little bit more, but take a look at the samples. I took a lot of them. I really want you to take a close look. Decide which is better for you. This was a really close call. All right guys, so here is a front-facing video test with the Galaxy S22, and this is how it performs. We're gonna take a look at the iPhone 13 now. All right guys, so here is the front-facing camera sample of the iPhone 13, the video quality. This is kind of what you can expect here. Let me know your thoughts on this one. 
All right, in the area of audio, Samsung is actually about a decibel louder in my experience, especially, well, only when you turn on Dolby Atmos mode. It gets very nice and loud, and that's a very good thing. Yeah, movie music, I just leave it on auto, it does the job. It gets a little bit louder than Apple, but where Apple really shines in their audio performance, I found, is they have this very clear sound, even when the volume's turned all the way up. They've tuned it very nicely. So even though there's no headphone jacks in 2021, or 2022, excuse me, you have very good audio on both of them. No major issues. I wouldn't make my decision based on that. Now, one area where I would say we have somewhat of a similarity is the 5G and the signal strength. Samsung has been like five bars everywhere I go. This is ridiculous good. But so has the Apple device. This phone gets great signal strength as well. They both are using Qualcomm in, inside of these and both of them have great 5G connections. So these phones are excellent phones as a phone. We complained, I complained about this before, on especially the iPhones, but now they're pretty much neck and neck in this area. And before we head up out of here, I wanna talk biometrics. I find the fingerprint sensor to just feel more high tech. I, I don't know, man. It's just been out a little bit less time. The Face ID has been out around forever. So I just, with the mask on in certain areas, definitely still a little more convenient. But I do find myself missing on both of them quite evenly. If I put my finger weird like that, uh, you wanna show me up in the video, but if I put my finger too slow, it'll miss sometimes. Or if I'm looking at Face ID on a weird angle, you know, sometimes it'll miss me. And, and this stuff just happens. It's just everyday quirks between both of them. I still find the traditional fingerprint scanners on older iPhones like Touch ID, you'll find on the newer SE3 to be much more reliable or the fingerprint sensor found on Z Fold 3 to be more reliable. But both of these have very good biometric unlocking. I wanna wrap it up here. Which phone to go with? Um, This is not as easy as it sounds in terms of, you know, if you want to talk about from a hardware perspective, these are very tough. It's a very tough choice. If you don't care about software, you like either, you're going to have a tough choice here, but I hope this video helped you break it down. Honestly, I think from a hardware perspective, I think that Samsung has a more clean design phone. I think it's lighter. It's more sleek looking. Um, I just like it more. The iPhone over here though, has a more classic like iPhone 5 like design and I think they do a better job in the area of camera optimization of the software and battery so the actual real world experience is smoother but that doesn't make it better because Samsung has features that you might be loving like their app pairs or their split screen and if you use this stuff you're going to be missing a lot with the iPhone, but if you're like, I don't care about that crap, I want everyday stuff to be smooth and reliable, then you're gonna love the iPhone. That's how you make your choice. By now, you should have decided throughout this content which is for you, and if you did, let us know what you picked down below. All right, guys, so this is the end of the video. We've concluded it by saying it's really gonna be down to, do you prefer the Android operating system, iOS, as always, but really the cameras, the battery, the build quality, and Really, it's down to, again, Samsung or Apple. Let me know which one you would pick, and if you want a video, helpful, entertaining, for me, click the like button for me, subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. We should